I did vomit it in my mouth a little bit trying to read it. Don't drag the dog into this. I think murder is good, actually. I don't like this. Hey, Amelia. It's been a minute. Suddenly I feel weird because I feel like now I'm being perceived. Anyway, back by popular demand. I have been peer pressured into sticking with this series. I have read the next two books in the Throne of Glass series. I would like the record to show that I finished these books over the summer. It is now the middle of November. As I try to explain these books to you, I may get things wrong. Silly little goofy little mistakes. Required reading for this video is either the first book or my first video about the Throne of Glass series. Nothing in the first book has any bearing basically on these next two, so you don't really have to read it to understand, but if you wanted to, you could. Crown of Midnight. This book has substantially better vibes than the last book. Selena is the king's champion, and that means that she kills people for the king. She's been going on this super murder spree for the king because apparently there are lots of rebels. There is a growing rebel movement here in Rifthold, a group of individuals who are willing to do anything to get me off the throne and who are attempting to interfere with my plans. Your next assignment is to root out and dispatch them all before they become a true threat to my empire. Her next target is this guy called Archer Finn. She just so happens to know this guy from her time at the Assassin's Keep, which I think is like the place where all the assassins live. She also was in love with Archer when she was growing up. He had never minded her ridiculous girlhood crush on him. In fact, he let her test out flirting with him and had usually turned her into a complete giggling mess. And now the king is like, murder him. And she has to, or else he will kill everyone that she knows and loves. And then also her. Also, Selena and... Chol? Col... Col... Cole. I forget how I pronounced it in the last video. I'll go with Kale. Selena and Kale have developed this bit of like flirtationship. They're spending a lot of time together. They're like hanging out, but only in a bestie way, but like definitely in more than just a bestie way. They're like hardcore flirting. One thing about me, I am not here for it. Selena watched him go, watched those powerful muscles shifting in his back, visible even through his dark tunic, suddenly grateful that Lithian had long ago left the castle. I think Lithian was Kale's ex-girlfriend. Anyway, that's gross. So you know how she's been murdering all these rebels because the king told her to? Well, it turns out she actually hasn't been murdering the rebels. She's like been helping them fake their own death to escape, which is a little iconic of her. One night she's in the library and she sees this spooky weirdo guy, but something about the figure standing in the open library doors made some ancient primal part of her send a warning pulse so strong that she didn't take another step. The person swiveled its head toward her, pausing as well. It sniffed at her, a huffing animal sound. And then her freaking necklace, the Eye of Elena, which is like her protection amulet thing, starts glowing because of course it is. So she's like, hmm, I wonder what that is. So she goes to visit the ghost of Elena. She wants to be like, what the heck was that thing that I just saw? The ghost isn't there. But you know who is there? A freaking door knocker that is talking to her. And his name is Mort. I quite like him. I think he's funny. This book and the last book don't even feel like they're part of the same world. There were no talking doorknobs in the last book, but there are in this book. Anyway, Mort, the doorknob, gives her a voicemail from Elena. If I could leave you in peace, I would. But you have lived your life aware that you will never escape certain burdens. Whether you like it or not, you are bound to the fate of this world. As the king's champion, you are now in a position of power and you can make a difference in the lives of many. Here I am reading this book. I'm excited because like she's got something to do. We're on page 50. This is objectively good. Absolutely ecstatic that we have like a call to action, a mission before 250 pages in like in the last book. Maybe is this book shaping up to be actually good? I was wrong to be hopeful. I have a lot of friends who are reading these books now for the first time. Like they seem to be genuinely enjoying them. And in my soul, I'm like, am I just a hater? Do I just hate things for fun? Let's have a cozy confidential chat. I recently had a bit of like a crisis because am I just an intensely negative person all the time? I'm always tired. I'm so negative. I've actually been told that I'm quite a positive person to most people which I find shocking because in my soul, I'm very negative. Anyway, so my friends are reading these books and they're enjoying them. Damn, it must be nice to just like things. Just uncritically enjoy 
the media that you consume. Couldn't be me. Anyway, where was I? Selena gets a voicemail from the ghost of the queen by way of a magic talking doorknob. What even is this book? Oh my god. So the next day, Selena sort of goes undercover with Kale to visit Archer Finn. Turns out he is a sex worker, but he also may or may not be a victim of trafficking by a wealthy lady. Archer is completely gorgelina gorgeous, and Selena, like, kind of likes him. Kale is jealous. He whips out the most red flag shit I have ever heard. Part of him, he knew, should be ashamed for finding some relief in the fact that she was going to kill him. He was a better man than that, and he certainly wasn't the territorial type. This girl that you like is like, hmm, this guy's kind of hot and sexy. And you're like, I think murder is good, actually. That's not chill. You can't, you can't just whip that out and expect me to continue to support you as a character. Some more stuff happens. Another complaint I have about this book is no more pronunciation, guide. We're just on our own for this one, which would be fine if the phonetic conventions were consistent across the names and words of the other book, but they're not. I continue to not know how anything is pronounced, and that is deeply distressing to me because I don't like to sound stupid. Selena stalks Archer for a bit longer. She's like, the king sent me to kill you, and he's like, no, please don't kill me. Archer tells Selena that the rebel group he's a part of is trying to find, like, the lost princess of Tarasin, Aelin? Gaflinkus? Aelin Galifinakis. Pretty sure that's not not her last name. Galathanus? Aelin Galathanius. To put her back on the throne. This is a shocking revelation for Selena that will come back in about 400 pages after I have completely forgotten this conversation. Kale confesses his true love for Selena. I find their relationship to be just a bit icky. Believe me, Selena, he snarled, his eyes flashing. I know you can look after yourself, but I worry because I care. Gods help me, I know I shouldn't, but I do. So I will always tell you to be careful because I will always care what happens. Selena sneaks into a party that's happening at the house of someone who is in this rebel camp that Archer was talking about. She sneaks into the office of this guy and there's this cryptic message and it says, it is only with the eye that one can see rightly. But as she's trying to figure it out, she gets freaking stabbed. She's She snuck into this guy's office. Archer helps her and it's like, slay bestie move. This guy comes in and he's like, hey, uh, you're not supposed to be in here. And Selena freaking acting queen of the decade she turns on the waterworks and she's like my like boyfriend broke up with me and i just wanted to like be alone for a second and one of your maids let me in guys like oh i don't believe you because my maids don't have the key to this room stab but it's not just like a regular stab either it's a poison stab so on the knife is like a paralytic and they have a little bit of a tussle and selena ends up killing this guy with his own paralyzing knife and then she like jumps out of a window or something i don't actually remember how she gets out of this situation but she's like walking back to the castle slowly but surely getting paralyzed and she makes it to the gates And then she finds Kale and passes out into his arms, and he takes care of her that night. She'd hardly known where she was going while the Gloriella, the paralytic, tore through her. All she'd known was that she had to get someplace safe. And somehow, she had wound up exactly where she knew she would be the safest. In freaking Kale's arms. Ugh! A bit later, Selena is spending time in the library, and she finds a secret door. It's made out of iron, which is immune to magic. And so she sees this door, and she's like you know what, this is probably trying to keep something in. And still, she opens the door because she's the silliest goddamn goose of the century. Stupid idea. So she opens the door and she sees a pair of glowing eyes. And so she very quickly shuts the door, which is the most sensible thing she has ever done. A little bit later, Selena brings Nehemia to the tomb of Elena. They have like a sassy little girls trip down there. And they're trying to figure out the riddle from the guy's office, but nothing seems to be working. And Nehemia, queen of the world, is not being very helpful. Like Selena's finding things that she thinks might work. And Nehemia's like, trust me, It's just a coincidence. Just like that eye in the wall. I could refer to anything, anything at all. Having eyes plastered all over things used to be quite popular centuries ago as a word against evil. And then we get more Kale and Selena romance, and there are some very cringe lines. They go to this ball, and Selena and Kale are both working at the ball because, you know, they're both on the king's staff. Selena whips out the, we'll never be a normal boy and girl, will we? No, he breathed, his eyes blazing. We won't. On the next page, she goes, the rest of the world quieted into nothing. In that moment, after 10 long years, Selena 
Lena looked at Kale and realized she was home. Like, I'm, like, a little obsessed with how just, like, cliche that is. Like, it's awful, and I did vomit in my mouth a little bit trying to read it, but, like, it's kind of slay. Selena tells Archer that he either has to fake his own death by the end of the month, or she actually will kill him, and he's like, damn, okay, I guess I will fake my own death. So that's, like, done and dusted. He has to wrap up a couple loose ends, but he's going to fake his own death and drop off of the face of the earth. Later, Dorian is at the castle meeting with the king, and he notices the king and Roland, who is Dorian's cousin, and also Duke Parrington, they have friendship rings i love that for them i actually am obsessed with that three matching rings three black rings to signify what that they were bound to each other this is great for me actually because i think that it's really important for men to have best friends and if they're having like a, a physical tangible signifier of their friendship that's great more friendship rings and friendship bracelets for men anyway they have this like meeting dorian duke parrington and the king and like all of the like council they're having this meeting about expanding calicula which is one of the slave prisons and dorian is like how about we don't hashtag human rights hashtag and the prison industrial complex i've heard enough he snarled at his father at roland and mullison at parrington and at all the lords in the room you want my vote then here it is no not in a thousand years no one's really listening to him and then he freaks out he like hulks out a little bit and punches the wall which is made out of stone and the wall freaking breaks the stone wall freaking breaks open in my notes of this i refer to this as kevin baconing So Dorian has magic. Congrats, King. You got magic now. Well done. His father's like trying to kill all people with magic. So like he has to hide it a little bit. <sighs> so Dorian has a little brother and it's his birthday. And the palace is putting together like a silly little carnival. One of the carnival people is called Baba Yellowlegs. She's a witch and she can read your future. Basically, all you have to know is that the witches are scary and they eat people maybe you don't want to be messing with the witches dorian has another magical moment he is searching for a book in the library he's like looking for answers about his magic in the library and a bunch of books fly off the shelf this man has the bright idea that he's going to go to the witch for answers peace and love to him that is the absolute worst idea i have ever heard fun fact about me like i don't i don't really believe in like the paranormal ghosts or witches but like i'm also not gonna mess with it because if it is real i don't want to be on the other end of that but dorian he does not have the same self-preservation instincts as me he is like i'm gonna go to this queen and she's gonna tell me what to do about my magic bad idea especially if you're trying to hide the fact that you have magic so your father doesn't kill you it's kale's birthday Dorian gets Kale a fancy horse because him and Dorian are platonic soulmates and they're best friends and I love that for them. Selena decides to set up a dinner for just the two of them, like a cutie little birthday dinner. And then at the end of the dinner, Selena, queen of the world, decides to drop the bombshell and she tells him that she hasn't actually been killing any of the people that she's supposed to be killing. Here's the thing. Kale is the captain of the guard. And so he is literally on the payroll of the king. His loyalty is to the king. I don't know why you would date him. Honestly, seems like a bad idea for everyone involved. Kale is like, if the king finds out, he's gonna kill you. Oh, 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 this part made me angry. Her blue and gold eyes flickered. I'd travel until I found a place where they'd never heard of Adderlin, if such a place exists, and she would never come back. And because she was young and so damn clever and amusing and wonderful, wherever she made her home, there would be some man who would fall in love with her and who would make her his wife. And that was the worst truth of all. It had snuck up on him, this pain and terror and rage, at the thought of anyone else with her. I just, I give up. I hate it. He's like, she's gonna leave me, and, and then she'll fall in love with someone else, and that makes me mad. Like, okay then do something about it first of all you have agency like you are a person and also i don't like that the first thing is like she was so young it just brings attention to the fact that like they do have a bit of an age gap and i don't like that anyway they kiss and i'm livid and then they have sex it's not like actual smut in this book but like they do have sex the next morning after they have sex selena is like 
I don't think we should tell Dorian about this. Okay, I have a question, like a genuine question. Do boy best friends tell each other everything? Because I have friends, every detail of their life, of their love life, of all of their, all, every part of their life, they tell me about it. Because we're friends. And like, I feel like that's a very like girlfriend thing to do. Are boy besties the same? Do boy best friends tell each other about like the people they have crushes on and like dates that they go on? I'm actually so curious. A bit later, Selena and Nehemia have a heart to heart. Promise me, she said, her dark eyes shining. Promise me that you'll help me free Elway from him. Promise me that you'll see my father's crown restored to him. That you'll see my people return from Endovir and Calicula. Selena's like, I can't. I'm just an assassin. I don't have that ability. And so now the girlies are fighting. There's one chapter, chapter 25. It's literally just one page. And so I'm going to read the whole chapter to you because I'm a little lost as to what's going on here. One of them has to break, the queen said to the princess. Only then can it begin. I know, the princess said softly, but the prince isn't ready. It has to be her. Then do you understand what I am asking of you? The princess looked up toward the shaft of moonlight spilling into the tomb. When she looked back at the ancient queen, her eyes were bright. Yes, then do what needs to be done. The princess nodded and walked out of the tomb. She paused at the threshold, the darkness beyond beckoning to her, and turned back to the queen. She won't understand, and when she goes over the edge, there will be nothing to pull her back. She'll find a way back. She always does. Tears formed, but the princess blinked them away. For all of our sakes, I hope you're right. This is Nehemia and Elena talking to each other. Stylistically, it sounds very different than the rest of the book. Like, I think one of the problems I have with, I think, all of Sarah J. Mass's writing, there will be random chapters or just, like, little bits, some paragraphs, where, like, the tone and the style, the writing style, just changes in the middle, and then it goes back to how it was before. And it's quite jarring. To me, it doesn't serve a very clear purpose. Anyway, this chapter, I think, is where Nehemia decides to die. So there's this very common criticism of this book and of this series in general, that Nehemia, she's the only not-white character in the entire series. She dies solely to further Selena's plot. Literally the one character of color, they kill her off to serve the white character's story, which is not great. That's not good representation. We get more development in the Kale x Selena love story. God, they're so dramatic. He'd kill any man who hurt Selena. And if the king ever gave an order for him to dispatch her, then he'd plunge his sword into his own heart before he would obey. His soul was bound to her by some unbreakable chain. That is so dramatic, especially considering literally the next page, he acknowledges that she's so young. He snorted, imagining what his father would think when he learned that Kale had taken the Adderlin assassin for his wife. The thought stopped Kale dead in his tracks. She was only 18. He forgot sometimes that he was older than her too. I recognize, she, so she's only 18 and he's like 24, which is like a it's a big age difference. And also, he has an established career. He's the captain of the literal guard. Very recently, she was, like, in prison. And she has nothing and no one. So, like, it just feels a little ick. The next freaking page, he gets kidnapped. And so Selena goes to save him. Surprise, surprise, it's a trap. He was used as bait to lure her by Archer. Archer freaking set her up, man. So it's fully a trap. Selena is trying to save Kale's ass. Nehemia is getting hashtag murdered back at the castle. They do, like, this big old fight. And Selena, like, almost kills everybody and then archer he drops the craziest bomb he goes i've been working with nehemia to lead these people for the past six months nehemia is fully in cahoots with archer she is part of the rebel people this was a whole conspiracy set up by like nehemia and archer and the rebels to get her out of the castle because everyone knew that if she was there while nehemia was getting murdered she would fully sacrifice herself to save nehemia and they didn't want that the worst part is kale knew the whole time someone was planning on killing nehemia and he didn't tell Selena. Very tragic. But also, this is why you shouldn't be romantically involved with anyone who is a politician. It's gonna get messy. You knew it was gonna get messy because he has to, like, divide his loyalty. And now we're all sad. Anyway, Nehemia is very dead. Like, it's, it's gross. The blood was everywhere. Before the bed, Nehemia's bodyguards lay with their throats cut from ear to ear, their internal organs spilling out onto the floor. Selena stood in the center of the freezing bedroom, gazing at the bed, and the princess's broken body atop it. Nehemia was dead. So, Selena is going through it for a couple reasons. One, her bestie, who I also have chosen to believe that they were also lesbian lovers, she's dead. And the guy who indirectly slash directly killed Nehemia is Selena's boyfriend? Question mark? They'd be fucking. It's very complicated. He'd known the king wanted 
decided to question Nehemia. He known that the king, the most brutal and murderous monster in the world, had wanted to question her friend, and he hadn't told her. He hadn't warned her. Plus, the king may or may not have been involved in Nehemia's death. It's unclear. Dorian said, my father said he was going to talk to Nehemia later on after dinner. From what I saw, this happened hours before that. Oh, and later it says, it wasn't the king, though. No, she had gathered enough in the few minutes that she'd been in the bedroom to know that it wasn't his handiwork. But, like, it could have been him. I don't know. I'm confused. But apparently it wasn't the king. Well, all of this is happening. There's a rebellion going on at Calicula, the other prison camp. There's, like, a, a slave uprising. Good for them. Turns out the person who murdered Nehemia and her guards is this guy called Grave. He showed up, I, apparently, in the first book. I was so uninvested in the book that I literally did not remember who he was. Like, Selena gripped the arm of the chair, her nails digging into the polished wood. It hadn't been one of Arabin's assassins either. She knew his style, and it wasn't this monstrous. Again, she went over the details of the bedroom now branded in her mind. She did know a killer this monstrous. Grave. And I was like, who? I didn't remember that guy from the first book. She decides to kill him. This is another instance where the prose gets randomly, like, super stilted. It'll be normal, just like the way that it's written. And then, like, it'll be a page and a half of just really stilted, flowery prose. Then it will go back to normal. And it has the same energy of when I was in, like, elementary school. I was writing these little short stories, and I thought I was the shit. I thought I was the smartest person ever, and I was doing this, like, amazing writing. But really, it was just inconsistent and bad. It's confusing. And it takes me out of the story, in my opinion. Nehemia is dead, so Selena is, like, poking around in her stuff. And she finds, in Nehemia's things, the book from that guy's office at the beginning. Turns out, Nehemia was fully a rebel, which is shocking to no one. And then somehow... All of this makes everything fall into place and Selena figures out the riddle. So she looks through the eye of Elena through this hole and she sees this whole poem. It's giving the location to three very powerful items, according to Mort. So this poem tells Selena where to find the word stones, but she doesn't know that yet. So she decides to go to the witch to figure out what it means. People have to stop going to the witch when they need some answers. It's a bad idea. The witch is going to cause problems on purpose. I can just feel it. Dorian and Selena are bantering. I can't tell if it's like flirting and the love triangle is back or if it's just in a bestie way, because remember, K and Selena are kind of on the rocks right now because he inadvertently murdered her best friend and you can't really come back from that. Dorian invites her up to his room, but just in like a bestie way. Oh, this part was really sweet, actually. Dorian nodded, looking at her with, with kindness she couldn't stand. Then you will always have a place here. That's really sweet. So Selena goes to the witch and the witch tells her where the word gates are. The word keys open the word gates, apparently. The witch tells Selena where to find them. She also freaking finally explains the whole word lore like a thousand pages into this goddamn series. The word governs and forms the foundations of this world, not just Aurelia, but all life. There are worlds that exist beyond your knowledge, worlds that lie on top of each other and don't know it. Right now, you could be standing on the bottom of someone else's oceans. Word keeps these realms apart. And then she like info dumps about the word gates. There are gates, black areas in the word that allow life to pass between worlds. All sorts of beings have come through them over the eons. Benign things, but also the dead and foul things that creep in when gods are looking elsewhere. The witch was trying to barter Selena for information about Dorian's magic, but Selena doesn't have any information about Dorian's magic, so she's like, no. Selena then gets trapped in the witch's trailer, and she has to kill the witch to get out, and then she is like, oh no, there's a dead body of a witch, and like, if someone comes in here and sees the dead witch, then like, they'll know it was me. So she decides to burn the witch's body, so no one knows she's dead. Okay, so Selena goes down to the dungeon in the library. There's these sets of doors. So there's first 66 sets cells and then 33 and then 22 and then 11 and then 9 so it's like the spiral of cells the like last door it's open so the spooky thing that is being held there has gotten loose the iron door on the third cell had been smashed its surface dented and folded upon itself but not from the outside whoever had been within had broken loose uh-oh paschettio it's definitely the spooky thing from the library though and then she ends up in the clock tower that is made out of the same black stone that the friendship rings are made out out of. Dorian has followed Selena into the library dungeon. <laughs> this makes me laugh. 
A chill went through him. He didn't like any of this. What was Selena doing there? As if in answer, his magic screamed at him to run in the opposite direction to find help. I, I don't think that's magic. I think that is critical thinking or like intuition. Not magic. That is your survival skills telling you to get out of there. I have it too, King, and I am not magical. Then, because of course there is, because why can't we have a normal amount of POVs in this goddamn book? The like spooky thing <laughs> gets its own POV for some reason. I hate it here. They end up defeating the creature. There's like a lot of drama, but they figure it out. The hood had fallen off the creature, revealing what looked like a man's face. Looked like, but no longer was. His hair was sparse, hanging off his gleaming skull in clumpy strings, and his lips. There was such scarring around his mouth, as though someone had ripped it open and sewn it shut, and then ripped it open again. <laughs> That's nasty. Yeah, so they defeat the thing. There was, like, a lot of drama, but everyone ends up okay. So the door knocker, remember Mort? He helped Selena figure out the first riddle to find where the first word stone is, and it was literally in the tomb. Except... The king already found it. So we know that he has one word stone, maybe two. And this is really bad because like the word stones give people power. So that's how the king has been so powerful and scary. And that's how he's been able to control people. He found the, he found the word stone first or the word key, I think. The word key, not the word stone. They're different apparently. So Selena is like, damn, I really wish I could talk to my best friend slash lesbian lover Nahemia right now, but I can't because she's dead. And then Selena is like, ding 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 right idea let me open a portal to the other world so i can talk to my friend that is so dumb that is so so stupid and the freaking witch was like things will come through portals and you're like no but i need to talk to my bestie bad idea but like pop off i guess let's see what happens so she has this bright idea to open a portal to the underworld to talk to nehemia because what could go wrong this sounds like a great plan and then dorian has this like prophetic dream where gavin who is the old king and he his soul lives in the tomb with queen elena is like you gotta you gotta go save selena she's about to do some dumb shit so Dorian is on the case. Selena's about to open a portal to the underworld. She goes to the dungeons and she summons Nehemia. Nehemia is like, girl, that was the stupidest shit you've ever done. Never do this again, you dumbass. You're gonna kill everybody. There is no time for you to tell me what you long to say. I came here because you need to be warned. Do not open this portal again. The next time you do, I will not be the one who answers a call. No one has the right to open the door to this realm, no matter how fierce their grief is. Finally, Nehemia is talking some sense into this girl because she, that was, that was a bad choice. And that's okay. You can make bad choices, but then now we have to fix them. So, the, okay. The way that she opened this portal was she, like, painted blood in the shape of, like, runes to, like, make a portal. Then Archer shows up. He's a bit crazy. And it turns out Archer is the one who organized to have Nehemia killed, which is obviously not chill with our girl Selena. She is already a little crazy. She just got yelled at by her ghost best friend. And now she learns that Archer is the one who did it. She goes nuts. So like I said, the way that the portal works is Selena writes these word marks in blood to open it and they're very specific. But then there's a bit of a tussle between Archer and Selena. He smudges one of the word marks and so it opens a another portal to a different part of the underworld and this is very bad because like a demon or something comes out which is crazy and just as this demon is like trying to kill everybody kale and dorian show up and they try to save the day except for like what are they gonna do against a literal demon cole is just some guy dorian has magic but like he doesn't really know how to use it yet also <laughs> kale brought selena's dog for some reason like leave her at home guys now is not the time dorian has like special magic apparently dorian didn't just have magic he had raw magic, the rarest and deadliest kind. Sheer undiluted power, capable of being shaped into whatever form the wielder desired. And so he tries to help, but it doesn't work. Archer stole the book that had the recipe on how to close the portal. So now they don't know how to close the portal, which is very bad. So Dorian is like, we should go get the book. But the demon drags the dog into the portal. And this is, this is where I draw the line. Kill people live your truth. Don't drag the dog into this. She didn't do anything. Kale, dumbass of the century, goes after the dog to save it into this freaking portal with a freaking demon. And so Selena has to go through the portal to save both of them. So dumbass of the century over here is now in a portal and Selena transforms into a freaking fae. The moment she burst through the portal, something changed. It was like a fog had vanished from her face, her features sharpening, her steps becoming longer and more graceful, and then her ears. Her ears shifted into delicate points. I don't like this. This is just not my kind of book. Like, I respect it if you enjoy this. I just, it's not my vibe. Like, I just don't want to read about this. I'm bored. I find this very boring. So, Faye Selina defeats the demon and closes the portal, I guess. And then she finds Archer and kills him because he killed Nehemia as she should. Like, 
you know, eye for an eye or whatever. Kayla's like, damn, if Selena is a fae, she can't be in the castle because the king will find out and he will kill her. Kale is like, I think we should send the king's champion to Wendland to dispatch the royal family. And I'm like, huh? But the thing is, Wendland was the last stronghold of the Fae, and that was the one place in Aurelia where she would be truly safe. She needs to be somewhere where the king is not. So he tells the king to send her to Wendland to go on like an assassin adventure, but really it will be where she'll be safe away from the king and around people who are Fae. And then, because we're at the end of this book, we have to get the like obligatory fucking king's POV where he tells all about his plan. This literally happened at the end of the last book too. At the very end, there was a whole chapter that was from the king's POV where he was like, this was everything that I planned and this is what my future plans are. I'm like, girl, like, where's the mystery? Keep it in. I don't care. I want to figure it out as the characters are figuring it out. I don't need the king to lay out his whole plot for me. I feel Sarah J. Mass is underestimating the intelligence of her readers. Or maybe she doesn't have faith in her ability to like effectively communicate what she thinks that the plot is. I mean, I'm sure it's very hard to write a book. I've never written a book. So, you know, glass houses and whatever. Don't tell me your plan. Buddy, I don't care. So Selena has to leave for Wendlin, and the ghost of Elena is like, forget about the word keys for now. You will sail to Wendlin tomorrow. Elena's eyes glowed bright. Leave the word keys and the king for now. Go to Wendlin and do what needs to be done. I am mad because finally there is like a coherent plot. There's a mission. I can see how the story would unfold. There's like a linear path in which everything is going to happen. And then Queen of the World, Sarah J. Mass, is like, but what if we what if we took a little detour and talked about something completely different? Completely new concept for the next book. Then why would you set up this whole word key thing? Maybe it circles back in the next book, but like, I'm not going to stick around to find out. I will not be reading past the third book. Peace and love to everyone involved. (laughs) Also, big reveal on page 414, we learn that Selena, queen of the world, is the long lost princess of terrorists. Selena Sardothian was Aelin Ashover (laughs) Galithin. I said a stroke trying to read that. Selena Sardothian was Aelin Ash River Galathenius, heir to the throne and rightful queen of Terrasin. Selena was Aelin Galathenius, the greatest living threat to Adderlin, and the one person who could raise an army capable of standing against the king. Now, she was also the one person who knew the secret source of the king's power and who sought a way to destroy it. Big reveal, Selena is the princess. The end. This book is over. I started recording and it was a nice bright sunny day and now it's 3 p.m and the sun is starting to set i love winter hey um so it's a couple days later and by that i mean it's been at least a month since i filmed that video i said at the beginning that we would be talking about both books except for i spoke for a really long time about the second book and then i put all of the footage into my little editor and it was four hours long and emotionally i don't think i can edit a four hour video in one go you get the vibes so this is where i'm gonna call it for today and then my thoughts on the third book in the Throne of Glass series, and my final installment in the reading Sarah J Mass and losing my mind will be next time. I didn't get a chance to do final thoughts for this book because this wasn't supposed to be where the video ended. I honestly don't know if I have any final thoughts. I didn't enjoy this book. I found it very boring. I don't know if you can tell (laughs) during the entire video, but the light in my eyes is fading. I was so bored. I just don't think I love Sarah J Mass's style of writing. It's just not for me. And if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I'm not a fantasy lover. I completely respect it. If you enjoy fantasy, if this is your favorite book series, like power to you, it's just not for me. And that's fine. I think I'm gonna continue to try to find a fantasy book that I enjoy, but I think I have to take like a fantasy hiatus because this one was brutal. This was rough for me. So yeah, thanks for watching my silly goofy little video. You can put a suggestion in the google form i have to stop talking about my google form in the description because i have like thousands of suggestions i can't ever read them all i have a pretty chunky list of things coming up stick around hang out suss out the vibes goodbye